everyone. Welcome to Pearl English. As always, I'm Sasha, your host. Today, we look at model verbs in the English language. Let's see what model verbs are all about. A model is a type of auxiliary verb that adds extra meaning to the main verb in a sentence. It is also called a modal auxiliary. I can hear you saying, what's an auxiliary verb? Simple, an auxiliary is a helping verb. That's because its function is to help add meaning to the main verb in a sentence. When combined with the main verb, this helping verb helps it to express tense, mood and voice. Take a look at this diagram. In this sentence, we see that the modal verb can comes before the main verb go. Its function here is to show ability. In other words, can has helped us to know that John is able to take a bus to his destination. Here's a list that you need to know. It would be great if you can memorize all of them. Can, could, may, might, must, will, would, shall, should, and ought to. These words cannot become main verbs in a sentence. They must be used with a main verb, which is in the base form. Models have the same form for both singular and plural subjects. Here's something interesting about modal. When put into sentences to help the main verb, they express different categories of meaning such as ability, urgency, possibility, determination, advice, choice, and many others. Here are the models and their categories of meaning. We use can to show present ability, like this. I can bake a delicious chocolate cake. My grandmother can play the piano and the violin. We use could to talk about past ability, like this. I could lift a car when I was younger. We could buy a lot of things with five ringgit ten years ago. We use can, could or may to ask permission, like this. Can I see you for a minute? Dad, could you give Diana and Rani a lift home please? May I start my presentation now, please? We use can, could, or would to make requests, like this. Can you show me your new mobile phone, please? Could you kindly wait at the lounge? Would you like some more rice, Upendra? We use must, should, and ought to to talk about things that people have to do or rules they have to follow, like this. We must respect our parents and our elders. You should apologize to Dave for running over his pet. They ought to teach their children to behave properly in public. We use may, could, or might to express the possibility of something happening, like this. We may take a trip to Pulau Tioma next Friday. My aunt could cook nasi lemak for us for the picnic on Sunday. I might clean and polish my bicycle this evening. We use shall, will, can and would to make offers. Shall I turn on the fan for you, Puan Amina? I will come to your house and repair your fence tomorrow. Can I get you something cold to drink? Would you like me to help you in the kitchen, Mum? Wow, that's a long list of sentences, wasn't it? But it's good for you, so stop complaining! Anyway, models can also be made negative by adding the word not. Here's how. 
That's it for our grammar section on model verbs. Keep practicing, okay? A simile is a phrase that describes someone or something by comparing it with someone or something else that is similar. Similes use words such as like and as. Here are some common similes using as to make the comparison. We keep very quiet in class because our teacher is as fierce as a tiger. Abu fell into the drain again. He really is as blind as a bat. My mother loves outdoor activities, but my father prefers to stay at home. They are as different as night and day. Maria won another singing competition last week. It's easy for her as she sings like an angel. I will never invite Achong out for a meal again. It's just too expensive. He eats like a horse. <laughs> you must not make Kalis Warren angry. He has a temper like a volcano. Okay, it's poetry time and we're going to answer some questions about William Henry Davis's poem called Leisure. But before that, let's recall a few important points about what a poem is. A poem is a piece of creative writing that communicates emotions and feelings to its readers. Some poems have their own unique rhythm and rhyme. Poems help us paint vibrant pictures in our mind with the help of our senses. They are usually arranged in a series of lines that can be separated into verses or stanzas. We'll now listen to someone reading the poem Leisure and then I'm going to ask you a few questions about it, okay? Here goes! What is this life if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see, in broad daylight, streams full of stars, like stars at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance, and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait, till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this if, full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. Okay, now that the poem is fresh in your mind, I'm going to ask you some simple questions about it. Ready? Where is this poem set? Okay, time's up. It's set in the countryside. Can you name one of the themes of this poem? And if your answer is either the importance of leisure or appreciating nature, then you are correct. In couplet 5, what is personified and given the name beauty? Time to give me your answer. And it is? That's right, nature. And here's the final question. Why do you think people should take time off for leisure? Okay, my friends, time's up. Actually, there are a number of reasons that you can draw from the poem and from your own real-world knowledge. But if your answer is anywhere near mine, then give yourself a pat on the back. People need to take time off for leisure because in this fast-paced life, 
they need time to relax their minds and recharge their spirits. People need to have a good balance between work and leisure, and going back to nature is one of the best ways to do it. Well, that's it from me. I hope that everything that we shared in this program will go a long way towards helping you become excellent students of English. Remember, practice makes perfect. Have a great day. Bye.